Hi guys, welcome to my channel and once again to my kitchen for another Cooking with Kaz video. I'm going to be doing another recipe from the Gino De Campo cookbook. This one is spaghetti carbonara. Now, this is my second time making it. I didn't vlog it the first time because I was just too tired and I just was not feeling in the mood to vlog. So I'm going to vlog it for you this time. However, I am going to make a change to the recipe. It was recently Italian week at Lidl and Eddie and I love mushrooms. So I'm going to be using this pasta. They did have one with beetroot in, which was a lovely pink and cream colour, but beetroot is not a flavour I like that much. It might look pretty, but I don't really want a carbonara with beetroot in. So there will be no spaghetti. Instead, it's going to be this pasta which takes five to six minutes on the hob. I'm going to be doing half the quantities stated because the recipe is for four and I'm only serving two. I'm also going to be using prosciutto cotto instead of pancetta. I could not find pancetta anywhere, but I used this last time and it works perfectly fine. So I'm gonna get on with making my carbonara. I only need my smaller frying pan for this one because there's not as many ingredients as in some of the dishes I've cooked previously. So I could use my lovely pink one that I got from the middle of Lidl, but it's really just too big. So this one will do. And a tablespoon of olive oil. We do have this olive oil, which again from Lidl and Greek because Eddie is Greek, but we got it because we love the bottle and once I've used it, I'm going to refill it with any future olive oil I buy because I just think it's really attractive. I feel like I'm showing you all my little purchases right now. A tablespoon of oil. And 10 grams of unsalted butter. I really should have got my cookbook stand out to put the recipe book on, but never mind, I didn't. It's actually my mum who suggested I use prosciutto cotto rather than pancetta. Whilst it is less fatty than the pancetta, that's not my main reason for using it. It's because it tastes really, really good in a carbonara, and I just like it better than actual pancetta. Okay, that's 46 grams. Not that much. I think it's fine to make swaps as long as it's driven from a healthy place and not an eating disordered one. 10 grams. That's 10 grams of butter, exactly. In the frying pan. I will move the camera so that you can see in the frying pan as I'm actually cooking. So I have to heat the oil and the butter to melt it and then I have to add, uh, it would be 50 grams of diced pancetta, but I'm just gonna put all of the prosciutto in did that last time and it was absolutely fine. And you're meant to do 200 grams of spaghetti for two. Uh, it's 250 grams of this pasta, so I'll probably do all of it. I'm not sure. We're not having anything with it tonight. Normally I'd do salad or something, but we're actually going out, so yeah. And you're meant to add parsley as well. I don't have parsley. I'm just gonna add oregano, because that works well in my opinion one thing that i do is i do trim the fat from the meat which i guess is still an eating disorder thing but you know one step at a time i say i trim it i'm actually just going to tear it because it's so easy to get off this is something i obviously still need to keep working on and it's why I'm in recovery rather than recovered. I'm not taking all of it off, I'm just taking off the big rind of it. It's at the end of each piece. I have washed my hands by the way and I'm washing them frequently and I'm washing my utensils frequently as well so probably just going to shred this by hand um, because it's tearing so easily and cutting it is just is so fragile it's just going to rip anyway so yeah 
using, you know, light butter or anything like that, you know, full fat butter, because Italian is meant to be one of the healthiest cuisines in the world when cooked properly. And this will be a proper Italian carbonara with no cream. And then I need to grate some Pecorino Romano cheese, four tablespoons. Uh, so that's about um, 30 grams. And I will also need an egg. So I have some blue leghorn eggs from Sainsbury's. And I'll be using one of those. I think that's probably shredded enough. It's kind of sticking together in lumps of it, but it does tend to separate during the cooking. And then I'll just grate the pecorino. Whilst I'm grating this onto a plate on the kitchen scales, the scales are not actually turned on. The reason is that I roughly know what two tablespoons of grated pecorino cheese looks like. And for this recipe, it's not going to massively impact it if I have a little bit too much or not quite enough of the cheese. And to be honest, I'm more likely to have more than I need than I am less than I need. So in this instance, weighing it and certainly measuring it with a tablespoon, in my view, would be pretty pointless. I'm just gonna weigh the pasta into this pan. It smells like normal pasta to me, but it does feel slightly different. Editing Cows would like to add that if you purchase this pasta in the future, cook it for at least two minutes more than it says on the back of the pack. It was still too firm even after the full six minutes and I don't think it's a purchase I'll be making again. So that's 50 grams that's left for another time. Now I need to whisk half the cheese with the egg um, and the other half the cheese I keep separate. These eggs are so pretty. You would then add the parsley to this, so I'll be adding oregano. I'd say half the cheese, probably that much. Again, I feel confident enough to judge this by sight. And if I did get it wrong, I can always grate more cheese. I've got plenty of it in the fridge. Mm, cheese and raw eggs, delicious. And I'm just gonna put a pinch of oregano. And I'm not gonna add black pepper because I hate it. I hate the stuff. Leave the cheese and egg there, and now it's time to actually start the cooking. If you'd told me at the beginning of 2024 that I would be cooking and eating a meal like this, I would not have believed you. But it's actually really surprised me how quickly I've found myself able to do this. It is a challenge still sometimes, but it's getting easier the more I do it. When it comes to eating disorder recovery and challenging your fears, it really all is about consistency and repetition. And then I put the pasta on for six minutes, uh, just boiling the kettle now. So this is it with only about two minutes left to go. Uh, the prosciutto, you can see, has crisped up in that lovely buttery coating. And the pasta, which I can't show you because it's there, <laughs> uh, is bubbling away nicely on the hob. Uh, you do want it to be quite al dente. Gina recommends cooking it for a minute less than it says on the pack. Uh, but I still tend to do it for the full time just because I don't put it straight in the boiling water even though I've boiled the kettle when I pour it over the pasta it does take it about a minute to just get back up to the right temperature again. So now that I've drained the pasta I return it to the pan. I will then add the pancetta with the oil. Yeah. 
after. It's not pancetta, is it? It's prosciutto. You add the uncooked egg and cheese and you stir it and it should cook from just the heat of the pasta. Um, so that is what I'm doing. Give it a good mix through, get everything evenly coated and distributed. You can actually see the egg cooking and the cheese melting as you stir. And then once that's done, serve, and then you put the rest of the pecorino over the top. And I'm gonna put some pepper on this one. I already know this tastes good because I've made it before and eaten it before. So yeah, hungry. I'm looking forward to it. And thank you for watching. I'm gonna go stuff my face now. Bye.